German nationals going on crazy so far. We're seeing Gay Guardian, we're seeing Black Wings, we're seeing a bunch of shit just fucking pop off. So first off, because of Gay Guardian, I I have to do this, right? So round one, uh, Gold Pride Runic versus, I don't, I don't even know what this guy's playing. Some weird, probably Labyrinth for something. I don't, I don't fucking care, but guess what? Round two, and I have to emphasize that it's round two because they still say round one right here. Lars, De well, he he's actually the one playing Gate Guardian. They're, they're going to fix this in a second. Gate Guardian versus Manadium. Now, if you don't know what Manadium is, it's the uh, current epitome of the Vesis Starfrost lore deck. So, oh my god. It's basically a deck full of like, if you remember like Gustos, it's like a modern version of that, where it's like when they're destroyed, they bring out another one and then they keep going. Our Gate Guardian player starting off with Shadow Ghoul searching field spell. Looks like no hand traps on the Manadian player side, except for Ash. Like the only hand trap he has is Ash. And uh, yeah, you, you definitely don't need to Ash a Shadow Ghoul, but honestly, sometimes it does hurt when you Ash Shadow Ghoul. Now he's activating field spell and he's going to use field spell effect. Who's he going to put down? Oh, now they fixed a Manadium Gate Guardian. He's going to put down Suijin, which I think it's really interesting because I would only put Suijin down first if I drew Magician Souls, right? Because my whole philosophy is always put Kazajin down first because that's the most, because you can always pivot to either Wind and Thunder or Water and Wind you know, so it gives you more options, right? You're putting Suijin down first, meaning you're like, I know most people don't know the matchup, so it's not even like it matters, but like you would not be able to pivot into your two best fusions because you already have Suijin. Now, assuming, I, I don't think we see too much of what in, in his hand, we see Celestial, like Destiny Hero Celestial. Um, is that what that was? I, I couldn't really see that. So anyway, Manadium player starts here um, because Gate Guardian player really had no fucking route. Like everything in Gate Guardian is a two card combo. Um, so he starts with the thing that pops and searches field spell, I believe. Yes, searches field spell. Um, if he already had field spell, it would have been able to search a different Manadium card, I believe. That's how that card works. And the Manadium monster, when it's destroyed, it gets to summon another one. Which is not once per turn. So, you know, as long as you destroy things and do all that stuff, you know, you can keep going with Manadium. But you're going to end on the same generic board of, like, Baron and a weaker version of what Super Heavy was at full power. At least right now. Post Duelist Nexus, Manadium is going to be goaded. But right now, it's like, eh. I know the Ruim Heart interactions were weird because that's what my friend was telling me when he was uh, playtesting play testing the deck. It's like the deck sometimes contradicts itself. He just go spell the field spell. I don't know if the field spell was going to revive something or something of that nature, but he go spell the field spell, but he still got another Manadium Meek from deck and he got, I believe that's the counter trap. Not too sure. I think I think that negates stuff if, if you control a synchro. So we'll see what goes on from here. Uh, he's gonna go triple tactics and he's gonna yeah, that was destiny hero celestial And he's gonna put back shadow ghoul interesting that he would put back with tactics instead of Drawing two because it's just one back row and two cards in hand. Like are you that scared of fucking nib? There's no shot, right? Because all you got to do is make like the vicious a stroud and I Don't know so now he's banishing that card. I don't know what that card does when it's banished. Oh, you get to summon visas from hand. Yeah, so why would you be scared of fucking um, Nib or something? Oh, here we go, Super Poly. Now this Super Poly seems kind of eh, because he's putting visas and uh, 1500 to 21 defense monster in grave for his opponent. So they don't get to make Baron, I guess, but he also just gets the Vicious Stroud, which is Vicious Stroud level eight, because if it's level eight, then he like my bro is not cooking like he, he goes into Baron anyway. Oh, he doesn't actually get to go into the Scareclaw link because Visa Starfrost was sent straight to grave. That's actually that's actually kind of goaded, actually. Now that I think about it. 
because one vicious is Stroud. It, it, it's whatever. It doesn't really do anything on your turn. It only does things um, during the Monadium player's turn. So I could, I could kind of see why. Like it's okay. So he pops Garua with the vicious a Stroud, and we're gonna get Garua effect to draw right. Ash Blossom on Gravura effect? What? You're you're trading an Ash Blossom for a draw one random card? All right, he's trying to synchro Baron. He wins from here, right? Unless his tuner is level four? Or something? I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, he definitely put himself in a corner here. Literally has no extenders. He lost hard to that super poly. This is why I would have draw drew two cards off of the fucking um triple tactics, because like your turn is done. You're attacking directly with a fucking vanilla, you know, because it's already used its effect. Yeah, I, I I think that's turnover because it's not like this dude has a level 12 sinker, I'm guessing. Uh, so he sets the counter trap, which we know is dead, and he used his fucking ash. Why would you ash Garura effect? What you fucking dimwit? Like, I, I want to Gordon Ramsay roast this dude so bad. Okay, so... It's Gate Guardian players to turn. We get Labyrinth Wall Shadow again. And it's funny, we could have actually popped um, Manadium Meek at the start of our opponent's battle phase, but uh, obviously that would have done more harm than good for us. So um, it's a good thing that we didn't. So, of course, he places down Kazuj in here and he's going to banish both to get our water and wind and water. Excuse me. And this one negates the effects of Spawn Tribe cards up to twice per turn. Nice to see him. Oh, it's it's always a good duel when you get to summon this card. So then he resolves uh, double attack Wind and Thunder, <laughs> which destroys any card on field, which is it's hilarious that this was like the last card in his hand or this was his uh, top deck. Excuse me. And, you know, he already had the materials on field to make a Gate Guardian Fusion. It's kind of great. Um, this dude's playing multiple ghost spell. He's playing Tikaboo, D Shifter, Super Polys. He's fucking prepared. This is game one. This is his main deck. Ghost spell, Tikaboo, Super Poly. That's kind of crazy. And he's gonna search Sangha here with the double attack wind and thunder. Gets it added to his hand. Um, it's the third piece that he would need for a Gate Guardians combined, so it does make sense. And I don't think he has the steam to make a thunder and wind this duel because that would take two more fucking turns gate guardian is like the slowest fucking thing ever <laughs> anyway uh attack into meek so he's gonna attempt to activate the field spell effect and wind and water coming in clutch just negating that shit and passing turn i i want this to be a lesson to everyone who thinks that their deck cannot compete in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Gate Guardian is the epitome of bricky, fucking fragile combo lines and setups, and they can still go like five rounds in a tournament. Like there are a lot of decks better than Gate Guardian with way better game plans and way more solid foundations in their um, archetypes than Gate Guardian and the fact that like us Gate Guardian players, we know that it's tough and that doesn't stop us from playing the deck though. You know what I'm saying? Like this is like, this is pure chat energy. We're playing this deck. It's, it's sort of like putting a debuff on ourselves. We just play this deck because we enjoy it. And he drew another super poly. Like just, just look at this game state. I, like this dude lost to I mean I, I get it M Manadium player I don't know why he shuffled back a card in his opponent's hand 
I don't know what was up there that was so scary. And look at that now he's had he's he he got the two extra turns to make a gate guardians combine. Look at how long it took him to make another monster on board. Two turns. And that's not game, but I mean, can the Manadium player really make a comeback at this point? Because Super Poly, two spawn trap negates, and, you know, combined, that's that's kind of GG's, isn't it? Like, you just scoop it up here. Oh, okay, so he makes another field spell, negated. What is he going to do? Imperm? Combine negate. Imperm? Combine negate. That's just not once per turn, my mans. <laughs> Wait. Hold no, no shot, no shot that Imperm's going through. No shot that, it, my mans. Combined is thrice per turn. I mean, sure. Uh, okay, Room Hearts. Let Let's see what Bro's cooking. He has to waste double Imperm to to get this Room Heart. So I really hope it was worth it. He's trying to think of what to search here. Does the room heart search the monsters or the spells? I don't even know. I think it's, yeah, it searches the monsters. Okay. And so he gets to summon out one of the other manadiums or something. But using what? Because it, it, if it's using field spell, then that's just getting negated. No, that's probably just its effect. Oh, room heart gets to add any manadium card. Okay. And what's this other monster? Fearless. If you control Visas or monster with 1500 attack, 21 defense. Oh, could he not do that because of the field spell? I think the field spell raises uh, Room Heart's attack, so he can't even resolve Manadium Fearless. Something like that. Yeah, Gate Guardian got game one. Okay, Manadium going first here. And we're already seeing a Super Poly in Gate Guardian's hand. We're seeing double labyrinth wall shadow which means he is making a fusion first turn whether his opponent likes it or not uh what monster is that a heavy tank possibly uh let's wait for him to search what do you search he searches ruin heart i mean of course he would um normal search meek summon meek activate the spell to pop and then so basically, he, he's going to get to go off with like no no holds barred. And I don't know how viable Super Poly is this format. It's certainly not a card that I would look at and be like, oh, I'm definitely going to use this. Like, I feel like he definitely looked into all the potential matchups and saw that. I mean, most most decks these days do use Dark Monsters. So maybe Star Starving Venom might show up, but like I think Garua is also pretty good because it's like same type and attribute, I believe, for for Room Heart. I mean for for Garua as a Super Poly target. All right, so he goes Visus, Visus make Light Heart, Light Heart searches, um, Reich Phobia. Um, let's see, my man's thinking. It took him like 10 whole seconds to activate field spell, bro. Like, that's a fucking judge. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so activate Reich Phobia. He's going to search Reich Heart, right? Oh, yeah, he has to. Well, actually, he could have. Um, I was going to say, like, the, isn't there a world where he could have? Uh, no, no, no. He he needed to summon Reich uh, Reich. Reichhardt to search Scareclaw or Rival to bring back Visus before he could do that. Because I was like, wait, isn't there a world where he could have bring back Visus before summoning the Reichhardt? But I guess not. Okay, so he goes into Excel Synchro. No, no Ghost Spell this time. So we are getting the Baron. Oh, we're not getting Baron. Why are, why are we not getting Baron? Bro, he would get nibbed so hard here. Like, what? what, what is bro cooking? Cross sheep. Why are you making cross sheep instead of Baron? All right, so he's going for... V uh, 
Vicious Stroud or whatever the hell. Um, bring back Meek. And you make a Baron that way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this pattern is a interruption, so I guess that works. And then this pattern bring back Visas. That's fine. And then he gets to extend with his Light Heart. Don't tell me he's going to make Appaloosa. If he makes Appaloosa, this is hilarious. Why is he arriving now? What is bro cooking? Because this kind of feels like a waste if he makes like a Appaloosa with this. Is he going to go IP? No, Chaos Angel. Okay, that makes sense. Um. Oh, he's getting super polyed for that Chaos Angel then. <laughs> Chaos Angel plus this batter. Because that is two dark monsters and that equals Starving Venom. And Starving Venom just kills Baron, right? And he's making another Vicious Estrada. Oh my god, bro. Whoa. Why are you overextending? For what? Appaloosa? This man overextended for no fucking reason. So we have two two choices for Super Poly here. It'll be hilarious if he drew a second one. It'll be hilarious if he drew a second Super Poly. But we have two choices here. Either we get rid of the Baron and the Apo and go into Garua, or we get rid of the Dispatter and the Chaos Angel and go into Starving Venom. So you definitely resolve. Wait, what does he sound? Oh, Fenrir. Okay. This is interesting. And then we Super Poly. Discard Kazijin. Nice. And he, okay, so he's not going for the negates, he's going for the darks to get Starving Venom. Now that's a three material Apo. I'm a little curious as to why he didn't go Baron plus Apo. Unless Garua, unless you can't make Garua with those two, you can only make Mud Dragon, I'm not sure. Because Appaloosa is very Baron's warrior, I think. So maybe you can't make a row with him. Okay, so Imperm on the Starving Venom. Okay. So Labyrinth Fall Shadow. Let's see if he negates this. Or if he attempts to negate. He's going to attempt to Baron negate. That's fine. This is, this is a real interesting uh, game state because based on, it all depends on the technical play of the Gate Guardian player here. All right, Wall Shadow. Because uh, he controls a Synchro, I guess. But wait, he used Baron Negate while Fenrir was on field? Oh, he he did Imperm Fenrir? No, he Imperm Starving Venom. Fenrir has not cooked since it's been on field, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um, negate the activation. Then if you have Visa Star Frost or Monster. Oh, I, I think they were trying to look if the card was actually negated. Okay, so Starving Venom crash into Apo. Fenrir can just attack into Baron, right? Because it didn't use his effect this turn. Imperm. Interesting. Um. So what does Baron do against Starving Venom? If you've already used Baron's Negate. I'm a little surprised he didn't Fenrir. He didn't r resolve Fenrir before, like during main phase when he activated the Baron effect, because I I definitely would have just let that go off. I don't know. Unless he Apo negated. No, but I don't remember Apo negating anything. Actually, yeah. As as a matter of fact, it, it was better to wait till battle phase and to get Apo off field real interesting let's see he's thinking reading starving venom thinking he's is he doesn't really have anything to revive because i don't think he can revive the dispatter 
So he's going to swing and then let his Baron go. And meanwhile, this dude had... Oh, why would you do that? Oh my god. Triple Fenrir coming in clutch. Euro print too. I believe those are English. The English cards at, at a German Nationals. That's kind of funny. Right, so 24 directly. Get rid of the field spell. Just in case. We don't know what this card he has in hand is. Uh, Mr. Victor. And it looks like Gate Guardian player has like a Sangha on top of the Fenrir. Okay, so what can he actually make here? Because he searches Ruim Heart, normal Ruim Heart. He searches a spell and then Fenrir banish Ruim Heart. And that's going to be a past turn, right? Oh, okay. So Gate Guardian player's turn. He Shadow Ghouls, gets hit with Ash. Fenrir effect, banish field spell. 24 directly. Just scoop it up, bro. <laughs> scoop it up, little bro. That's it. You're cooked. You lost to a Fenrir. This dude over... Dude, there was no reason to make that second Vicious of Stroud, like, at all. Like, this dude overextended for no fucking reason. Like, I get the whole Chaos Angel thing, but, like, come on. In this format, where there's... Where everyone's on board breakers, you're overextending like that first turn? You didn't think Dark Ruler evenly was a thing? I mean, I guess he had the back row for it. It's funny, like... Without Kaijus, I think Super Poly was like the only thing that could have broken that board that he made. Because he, he did have the counter trap and imperms and a whole bunch of stuff. But it was it was all win more at that point. He was not thinking about turn three. He was thinking, I'm going to win on turn two. And then Gate Guardian comes in. Gate Guardian, enjoy your Chad face comes in with the fucking Super Poly. Oh, my God. This is this is a great watch. I, I love modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks just failing at what they do. Just losing to a simple Super Poly. And I can agree, Super Poly is a terribly designed card that should not be a three. But at the same time, it is kind of funny. Is that not game? The way the the way he looked at the camera. Is 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 that not game? He has one hundred life points left. What is bro cooking? Triple Tactics. Congratulations, you just lost to Gate Guardian. <laughs> Look at that double Vicious of Stroud in this game. What was Bro cooking with that second Vicious of Stroud? I don't get it. All right, Sangha, Fenrir, Lightning Storm. Yeah, I'm 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 just as surprised as these guys are. It's in German, right? Yeah, yeah, it's in German. We, I, I can't understand a word that's being said here. But, um, funny game. Super, the quirky Super Poly gets us a win against Manadium. And I, I just want to look at this guy's first turn board again. So he went. And he did, he did not need the Chaos Angel there. Like, I don't see, why would you even bother going into, it's not a, disruption interruption of any kind it's not in a gate like what's the point of like extending into the like i i get summoning visas back from the banish zone to um to then link link these four into appalooza right like that that makes sense but why make the chaos angel first that's just that's just minus like you're you're kind of just asking for it at that point Like literally, if he would have, um, if he would have saved that arrival, because there is no reason to activate this, there is no reason to go into Chaos Angel, um, this early. You had like two, like one, Appalooza would have been three, four, and then five interruptions, going first, and you didn't lose to Dark Ruler, you didn't lose to Evenly, didn't lose to Lightning Storm. And three negate Apo. So you shouldn't lose to Fenrir either. Because literally, um, if he would have saved his Visus and his Reichhardt, turn three he could have made 
a vicious Scareclaw ar- arrival, revive Reichphobia, um, search another Scareclaw card, unless he's, he's only playing the one field spell um, or the one arrival and he has no other Scareclaw card in his deck, then maybe it makes sense to go this hard this early. You could also re- re- revive, because you also have Dispatter, right? So you could revive another one of your banished pieces like Ruimheart or something, revive Beezus, synchro both those off into chaos angel i don't know man like he could have played this way better like this was and uh, again like super poly was really the only thing that could have broken this board besides kaijus but like that's something that you i, I would have expected like a lava golem or a kaiju in game two of all things going first i would have expected a lava golem or something like that and that way like you you could still have an negate because like you'd have more ways to make things basically. I, I'm not a Manadian player, so maybe him overextending was the only route that he saw, but it, it just felt redundant. But what do you guys think? How, how do you guys uh, think this Manadian player did? Do you, do you think he misplayed hard making all these monsters turn one in a game like Yu-Gi-Oh? Or do you think this was the best thing that he could do? Let me know in the comment section below. Either way, Gate Guardian, huge dub. And like, this is why I'm telling you guys, like that there is no shot that you get when 2000, in, in 2023, you can play anything. Like if Gate Guardian could get a win, anything can get a dub. Gate Guardian is the, one of the slowest, brickiest, fragile decks out there. And the fact that it could still win in a fucking, five negate board 